This entire project, which is the fourth wall, um, what we had to do first and foremost was to actually go to the museum, right? And then choose a piece in the permanent exhibit. Uh, so that piece was supposed to represent Canadian slash Quebec history. And then from that piece, we have to then respond to it and add a second layer, right? To add the complexity of what is uh, black history and culture. And then really, what is it? what does it mean to be African Canadian, right? So that's kind of what the project was about, to really put those two elements together and then explain it visually, right? Um, so the piece I chose was um, at the theatre by Prudence Heward. And Prudence Heward is a pioneer for women in terms of arts in Montreal. Uh, she really helped create a space for women artists in Montreal. And her painting at the theatre um, depicts two white women at the theatre. You just see most of their backs, but you can see from the clothing, the, the actual place where they are, a theatre. These are cultured women, these are modern women of her time. And that was what first inspired me for the project. I was like, yes, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to talk about feminism and all that. Um, and then I started doing more research, and I fell upon images, her paintings of, uh, of black women. And the difference between them is astounding and quite depressing, honestly, let's just say that. Um, because here you have a woman who is portraying such strong, uh, white, such strong women, and that's how I first saw it. When I first saw these paintings, I was like, she's portraying a strong modern woman. And then I realized, upon seeing the paintings of the black woman, she's portraying a strong modern white woman, right? So you're adding, because she's portraying them differently, you then have to think about race, right? Because it's not the same story, right? So yeah, there you have the white woman, and then you have the black woman who's portrayed naked, um, and in her positioning, you can see there's an obvious power play, right? She doesn't look comfortable. She's, she's naked and the background is in a jungle. So it's kind of like, and the title. Then you look at the title, one of them is called The Negress, right? And then you put all of these elements together and you start to realize that the modern white woman exists because there is a traditional exploited black woman. So here I was super inspired and like, this is amazing, like I'm gonna talk about this woman. And then I realize you can't escape race, basically, right? So we can talk about feminism, but you can't ignore race. And that's the whole issue of black feminism versus white feminism. The issue of race creates a divide, unfortunately. Like, in an ideal world, it wouldn't be the same situation. But even looking back in Montreal, and I have to double check the date. The painting was done in 1928. Um, so her paintings were around in that time. So back in Montreal in the 1920s. I mean, there was that divide of like how feminism can be uh, portrayed for white women and black women. So that's how this entire project started. And the, the main question then became, how does the black woman fit into this concept of modernity? How does modernity uh, intersect with race and gender, right? Because it does. You can't see the black female body naked and not have thoughts immediately. So whereas you can see a white female body as in a painting uh, at a museum and just think it's pretty, for, like I was talking to someone and they were like, when I see a black female body in a painting, I, I immediately start thinking about things because it's such a loaded image, right? So you have someone like um, the hot and top Venus who was taken from South Africa, brought to Europe because her body was something so, so disturbing and so weird and so like, they weren't used to it, and here she was paraded all around for these white people to, to look at her. And there's always been that exploitation of our bodies, right? We've never actually, to me, like when I think of it, and like I think of sexual liberty and all of that thing, we've never really had claim to our bodies because everyone has a claim to it. Everyone has to has something to say about it, and it's never really ours. People are constantly policing, policing how we dress, policing how we look, policing every single element of us, and it just, there's so little choice left, but modernity is choice. It's being able to say, I can be a mother, or I don't have to be a mother. It's being able to say, I can be a CEO, or I can actually just be a stay-at-home mom. It's the ability to make that choice, and to make that choice based only on what you want.
And then as an African, uh, as a Nigerian Canadian, the different identities that I have mean that modernity for me is being able to not actually throw away certain identities, but have them all together, right? To have them, they're separate identities. These sometimes don't seem to overlap at all, right? So that's why there's the distance. Because some identities, like um, the second one and the last one, where you have the fur and then you have the one with the, uh, the traditional head wrap, those are identities that sometimes they seem to contradict, but in fact, they don't at all because they can exist in the same, per in the same person, right? It would be wrong to reject certain identities. This is my personal interpretation of the modern black woman. I had to create my own space, right? So I had to create a space where and these different identities operated, right? I, I recreated and redefined modernity for myself. And basically, I'm trying to invite other people to do the same. I'm studying at McGill. I'm in a very academic situation. Like, I can go on to work at I don't know what, but you know what I mean? Like, I have opportunities available to me. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm not writing papers. I'm using art because I know it's, to a certain extent, a more powerful tool if you're trying to get other people to listen, right? So art is special in that way that it can immediately, like, get someone to question something, right? It's interesting, and then you start questioning it. Like, why did she do this? Why did she do that? And it's what I want, and that's why I started Color Conversations, is to start that conversation. So to use art as a medium to challenge certain aspects of our society, academic or whatever concept, has to be questioned. And I think a critical spirit is like the most valuable tool we can have. So if you use that critical, um, critical spirit in your academia, if you use it in your artwork, if you use it in your music, any way that you can use it, just get people to ask a question. You know, just get people to challenge something. And I chose art because I think it does that best.